Guess who's back? Back again. <laughs> Wedding photographers are so easy to work with. They never cause a problem. They don't have egos. They never get in your shots. And we all love wedding photographers. Okay, so maybe that's not exactly the case. And I don't really want to bust the chops of wedding photographers because most of them are really cool and most of them are really fun to work with. But from time to time, if you don't do your job as a wedding filmmaker, you might have a terrible experience with a wedding photographer. So in this video, I'm gonna break down some tips and tricks for you to work well with wedding photographers. So let's get into it. To start, it is all about communication, and I'm talking about getting in touch way before the wedding day. And a lot of people will say, yeah, I reach out to the photographer on Instagram or I'll send an email, but I have a trick that works almost every single time, and that is to get either the planner or the couple involved in connecting the two of you. That way you can say to your bride or your groom, hey, wedding photographers and I get along really well together, but I like to connect with them before the wedding day. So if you could send an email or you could send a group text to them and me at the same time, that'll save me a lot of headache. And while you're at it, if you can just let them know how important video is to you and how excited you are to connect the two of us, that will make a big difference. Because if the photographer knows that it's really important for the wedding videographer to get their shots, and it's really important to the bride and groom or to the couple, they treat you differently from the very beginning. If you just reach out and kind of cold call them or cold email them, you might not get a response, but having the bride or the groom reach out on your behalf and connecting the two of you, that is a surefire way to make sure you're in connection with the photographer before the wedding happens. So when you do get on the call with the photographer, you don't wanna be all about business. You wanna to get to know them, you wanna know their story, maybe their style, and then learn about how they work on a wedding day. I always recommend asking them about how they do things first and then letting them know how you do things. And so if you're able to talk to them first about what they do, what's important to them, get to know them, it opens up that door for clear communication. You can tell pretty quickly if a photographer has worked with video crews before and if they think that working with videographers is difficult. So just be aware that some videographers have ruined it for us and you need to do a lot more work just to gain the trust of the photographer. Then after you get to know the photographer's style a little bit and a little bit how they do on a wedding day, usually by that point you're vibing a little bit with them and you can start to talk about what's important to you. So for me, I might say something like audio is really important for me during interviews or speeches and I'll just lay out some of the most important parts of the day for me and make sure that the photographer knows how I work in that scenario. But by having a conversation with the photographer beforehand, it gets you a couple of things. It gets you a little bit of face-to-face -face with them so they know you're not one of those videographers. And it also builds a connection with you where you don't feel like you're just meeting them on the wedding day. Another thing I recommend to do if you haven't gotten their phone number yet, this is a great time to say, hey, let me text you really fast so you have my number and so we can all be on the same page. When I'm working with a photographer, I'm making sure that they have the same exact timeline as me and that I'm hopefully starting at the same exact time as them so we can work together. And that's my viewpoint the entire time when I'm working with a photographer is I'm on the same team as them, we're on team couple, we're there for the couple, and we're gonna work together to make this the best day possible for video, photo. We all have jobs to do, but we're all on a team. Now, before I forget, if this video is helpful, do us a favor and hit that like button. It means the world to us and it helps the YouTube algorithms, the YouTube gods, whatever it is. But take a second, I'm stalling, so you can just click your little mouse on that like button. It'll help us out a ton. Now I'm gonna move on to talking about the wedding day itself. Typically the morning of the wedding or the day before the wedding, I'll just shoot a friendly text to the photographer saying I'm excited to work with them, make sure they have the same timeline as me and that we're all on the same page. And that morning typically before I get to the wedding, most of the time I'm stopping for coffee or I'm stopping for a smoothie or something. So I will always include the photographer in that text where I say, hey, I'm gonna be grabbing a coffee. Would, would I be able to get you something? Most of the time they don't want anything, but it's just that gesture to say, I'm on the same team as you. It goes a really long way of just setting the tone for the day. Now I wanna talk about when I actually get to the wedding day. 
I'm doing my best to find the photographer if they're around and just connect, say hello, make sure they don't need anything and so we can get on the same page. For the longest time, I used to just fall in line with whatever the photographer was doing, but I can't recommend enough having a creative voice on the day. Talking through the timeline, offering suggestions on where you think things could and should be will set up the tone for the day that you're not just gonna be a doormat and you're not gonna just do whatever the photographer says, but that you want to have a say in how things go. There's a difference between being a doormat and being a jerk, but there's somewhere in the middle there where you can show them that you are a creative person too. You're going to be having insight on what we're doing for the day and we're going to work together. So there's a lot of it built in there. The tone, the way that you communicate will set the tone for the day. Once you get started, I can't say it enough, pay attention to ways that you can be a team player. If you brought some extra bottles of water or some snacks, or if you're just looking out for the next thing in the timeline, maybe you could say something to the photographer like, hey, in 15 minutes, we're supposed to be doing the first look, so we need to finish up dress shots. I just wanted to keep us on track with the timeline. Little things like that, or hey, it's gonna be loud out front here. Maybe we can do a first look over here. Just interjecting things that might be helpful, but also showing yourself as a team player. Some of my best referrals come from photographers and it's these little things that add up over time. If you're doing the right things to build connection with them, you're helping them, you're helping them see ahead on the timeline, you're just being a good hang, you're being a good person to be around, they will start wanting to work with you. And I can't tell you how important, I would say 25 to 35% of my referrals come from wedding photographers. You find people that you work with really well and if you do these things, you can then work with these people again and again and you don't have to do these same calls every single time. You know how to work with these people and that's where the fun really happens. Now, before really important moments happen, for me, that might be an interview, that might be a letter reading, a first look, the ceremony, things like that. Before those moments happen, that is when I'm going to reiterate to the photographer that this is really important for video first. I'll say something like, hey, this letter is really important for video, especially the audio. So you'll just be aware of the fact that your camera makes a lot of noise when you're taking photos. Try to not go crazy on the photos if you don't have to. If there's an emotional moment or something like that, feel free to go crazy. But if you've got your shot, just please be aware that I'm recording audio as well. And you can say things in a certain way that you tell them what you want without being a jerk about it. So throughout the day, I'm being very respectful, but I'm not a doormat. I'm not just taking what is given to me. I am being creative together with the photographer and working to set that tone throughout the day. So that way, whenever we get to really important moments like the ceremony or first looks or the bride and groom portraits, they know that I'm not just going to be a fly on the wall. They know that I'm actually going to have something to say about it, and that's going to be really big for you moving forward throughout your wedding day. And I kind of hit on it earlier, but you want to make suggestions on where things take place, especially things where audio matters a lot, and it's not just the pretty picture that matters. So many times a photographer has been like, let's do the first look right out here by this street. And I just say, okay, that's fine, but then my audio is trash. Instead, you can say, ah, that looks really pretty, but is there a way we could do it somewhere a little more private because the audio is really going to be important for me? Most of the time, like 99 out of 100 times, the photographer is gonna be like, oh yeah, sorry, yeah, let's move it over here. But because you said something, you earned their respect instead of just taking whatever was given and then whining about it on a Facebook group later. Lastly, if a photographer is using flash, I wanted to mention this because sometimes a photographer has the flash on and they're going crazy. That is a question you wanna make sure you ask them in your initial meeting and just work with them to say, hey, it does not look good on video whenever it's flashing. So once you get your shot, let me know and then I will film this. It takes longer, but that's honestly just how it is. And you don't wanna ask the photographer to not use flash if that's their style. That's a great way to upset them, but just let them know, hey, if you're doing flash, I'm gonna, it's gonna take me a little bit extra time because I have to get footage between the flashes. So now let's talk about the ceremony itself. What I do with the photographer on the wedding day is 10 or 20 minutes before the ceremony, I say, hey, when you get a second, I wanna walk through the ceremony with you and make sure we're not in each other's shots. I don't say, I need to tell you where my cameras are going to be so you don't get in my shots. So that's a big difference there. There's a little bit of a shift, but empathizing with them and what they need first, and then after that is a great time for you to tell them what you need. So my conversation will look a little something like this. 
I'm going to really prioritize the groom's face and the bride's face whenever they're walking down the aisle. Where do you plan to be? Where does your second shooter plan to be? And then I'll say, this is usually how we do things. We'll have a camera set up over here on a 70 to 200 and one over here getting the bride's face. And if you're standing in the middle of the aisle, you're gonna be in all of those shots. So if that's where you're gonna be, I need to change my plan a little bit, or could you change your plan a little bit? So just working with them saying, where are you gonna be? This is what's priority to me, what's priority to you? And just being that team player we keep talking about, you're gonna be able to work a plan together. And I shoot ceremonies with four cameras, and one of the things that I always say to the photographer is, I have a lot of cameras, so that way you can walk in front of them if you need, but please just don't park it in the middle of the aisle for the entire ceremony, or I'll have to like get your attention somehow and make sure that you get out of the way, because you'll be in all of my shots. And so I will point out where my cameras are, what the focal lengths are, and just say, are you good with this? And about one time out of 10 still, the photographer forgets and gets in front of one of my shots. And so I do different things where I might tap them on the shoulder or just get their attention, but you can only do so much as the wedding filmmaker to make sure they're not ruining your shots. And by telling them the most important things to you during the ceremony, that helps them to remember how important those things are during those moments. For me, I want to see the groom's face really badly, so I make sure that that's priority whenever he's seeing the bride for the first time or the bride's face when she's walking down the aisle but from there, I might do something like, hey, do you want a wide shot during the ceremony? Let me move my camera out of the way so you can get that shot. I'm thinking about them as well as myself. So working with them during the ceremony, it's not always gonna be perfect. It's a live event, but letting them know where you wanna be, where they're gonna be, all that really, really helps on working with them on the day. Now I wanna move on to the portrait session with the couple. Working with the photographer is really important at this time, and I will say something like, hey, I'm going to have a few poses that I want to do as well, but movement is really important for me, so I'm gonna let you get a pose set up, and I might have you tell them to give each other a kiss, or to look at each other, or to hold hands and walk. So I might be whispering a few things to you as you're setting them up, and I also have a few poses just for video if you don't mind me stepping in a couple of times. And just by setting the tone like that, the photographer usually is actually really excited that I have something to say when it comes to portraits because it's a lot of pressure on them. And so if they're changing out a lens, that lets me jump in. Or if I have a creative idea, we're working together and vibing and saying, ooh, it'd be cool if you grabbed his lapel real quick and twisted him around or give him a kiss or oh my God, like I could say something that might make them giggle or, and it really works together if you are thinking about those things with the photographer. So be sure to step up and say something about the kinds of poses you want, the way you want things to go down during this time of the day because nobody else is thinking about video besides you. So one side note is if you are dealing with a crappy photographer, maybe a new photographer that just doesn't get it and doesn't know how to work with a filmmaker, or if you're working with just a jerk bag of all jerk bags and they don't care, I would suggest just speaking up in front of everybody. The bride and groom are there, the photographer's there, they're not listening to anything you have to say. So you just say, hey, after this pose, after he gets done with this, I'm going to do a pose. And just by announcing that in front of the couple, the photographer would have to step in and say, no, you're not for, the, for that to not happen. And that wouldn't be a good look for them. I hate whenever I have to do this, but it has happened from time to time because I really want to get the best footage for the couple. Sometimes they spend all their money on me and they're working with a photographer that just doesn't know better. Sometimes they're just spending a ton of money on a lot of people and the photographer is full of themselves. So. It's a bummer, but it's worth noting that sometimes you really just have to step up and say something as the wedding filmmaker. After the portrait session, we're usually off to the reception and there's not too many times at that point where we get in each other's way, the photographer and myself, but I am always making sure that they're aware of where I'm going to be during speeches, where I'm going to be during dances, and we always try to stay on the same side as each other. And I'll just communicate, hey, I'm gonna do speeches over here. This is the most important part of my day. Is it okay if you and your second shooter stay somewhere over on this region? We're all gonna be shooting this way. Does that work for you? It's a pretty background and I'm just showing them 
usually they're like, yeah, that's awesome. That's great. I don't have to think about it. So just working with them at the reception, there's usually not a lot to get upset about during that time outside of the speeches. So if you're just paying attention to where they are, trying to have fun with them, trying to be cool, taking video of them doing their thing, it's going to work out for you. And before I sign off today, I have to let you know about the complete wedding videography course. It's coming back out in a few short weeks as this video drops. So head on over to completeweddingvideography.com to get on the wait list for when we open up our complete course from A to Z to build a six figure wedding video business. Thanks again for tuning in and until next time, we'll see ya.